Hi again, it's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part two of our eight-part series, Basic Training with Premiere Elements. So we've got a new project opened up. Of course, what we need to do before we can start making our movie is to get our media into our project. And our media includes photos, video, audio files, music, whatever we want to bring in and make our movie from. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you see Add Media. By the way, I just want to make clear that when you're opening a project, you go to File Open to open a Premiere Elements project or File New. Add Media is for actually adding the media files to the project itself. If you click on Add Media, you see a number of ways to add media. If your media is already on your hard drive, which it quite likely is, the simplest way to get it is to go to Add Media, Files and Folders. This opens up a browse screen, and from this browse screen, we can select either by holding down the shift key and selecting the first and last in a series or holding down the control or command key and selecting individual files. Click open and they're added to our project. Now a very nice feature of Premiere Elements is that the program automatically sets its project settings at least about 95% of the time based on the very first clip you add to your timeline. And so if I grab say this video clip and drag it down here to video track one. You may have noticed that just for a second, the program had to think about it. And then if you look right above it, you see there is not a yellow orange line here along the bottom of the timeline. That's an indication that the program's settings or the project settings match the video specs or the specs of the video file. When you see that, you know you're golden, you know your project is properly set up. If you see an orange line above it, you may have to do some additional things and there come to moviepix.com to our community forum. We'll help you figure out what to do next. That said, there are a number of ways to control your view of the timeline. You can use this little slider over here to zoom in and out. You can click on fit view right here to fit your entire video onto your timeline. Or you can use these keyboard shortcuts. The plus and minus key zoom in and out. The backslash key over your enter key gives you fit visible. In other words, it fits the entire movie into one view on your timeline. Now often the video that you want to add to your project is still on a camcorder. And if your video is on a camcorder, you could of course manually copy it from the camcorder to your hard drive over a USB connection. But I prefer to use the video importer. There are a number of advantages to using the video importer. Right now, I have my Canon camcorder plugged in via USB. I had to do some additional configuration on my camcorder itself, but it is on and in playback mode. And now if I go to add media and select video from cameras and devices, the program is gonna interface with my camcorder. This is an AVCHD camcorder, saves the video onto a little SD card or onto a little hard drive on my camera. If for some reason you don't see these thumbnails come up when you're properly set up, go up here to source, play around. Maybe you can try one of the other options up here and it will connect to your camcorder or interface with your camcorder. These little thumbnails represent video clips that are on my camcorder. I can preview any of them by selecting uh, one and then clicking on the little play button here in the preview window. You notice that they're all checked. That means once I start importing, all of them will come in. I can click on uncheck all and simply select the ones that I want to bring over to my computer. There are options here for deleting the originals from your camcorder after they're moved, for adding directly to your timeline, I usually uncheck that, and for creating an instant movie, that is exactly what it sounds like. You throw the media in and the program creates a movie for you. You can select where the video files are saved by clicking on this folder. And by default, the program will keep these file names I don't like that uh, because often the camcorder will reuse the same file names. They're just numbers. We'll reuse the same file names and you end up with files with the same name and that can get kind of messy. So go over here to presets, set that to custom file name and now I can call it touring. And then when I import my files, they're gonna come in as touring 001, touring 002, touring 003, much more descriptive than what's there now. Once I've selected all that, I can just click on Get Media. The files will be transferred over from the camcorder, actually copied from the camcorder, and then added to my project. And here are the new files that have been added over from my camcorder. I can drag them to my timeline and start making my movie. Now in part three, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna bring some media down to our timeline 
and we're going to look at some of the basics of trimming, cutting, and assembling your video.